looking for driver genes um, in the neuroblastoma data challenge. Welcome, Shin. Thank you, David. Uh, I will try to keep it on time so we are not starved. <laughs> so good morning, everyone. I'm Chen Suo from Fudan University. The title of my presentation today is Accumulation of Potential Driver Genes with Genomic Alterations Predicts Survival in High-Risk Neuroblastoma Patients. This is a joint work between Fudan University and the Karolinska Institute. So neuroblastoma is the most common cancer in babies. It is an embryo tumor that uh, of the sympathetic nervous system, meaning that um, the cancer is uh, thought to be the origins from uh, the developing and the incompletely committed precursor cell derived from the neural crest tissues. According to the SEER research data, um, there are 650 uh, new cases that are diagnosed uh, each year in North America, accounting for 7% of pa pediatric malignancies. And um, researchers noticed that there is a diverse the, um, disease, uh, biologically and also uh, quite dramatic clinical behaviors. Broadly, uh, neuroblastoma phenotypes can be observed in two. So the uh, benign phenotypes and also the aggressive ones. Uh, from the uh, figure, we see that the benign neuroblastoma shows a high likelihood for spontaneous regression, as uh, we ob observe in blue in the survival curves. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, for the high-risk neuroblastoma patients uh, with stage 4 disease more than 18 months as diagnosis and patients of any age and uh, stage, uh, also uh, with MIG unamplified tumors, such patients have uh, by, uh, bad survival as we observe in the red, uh, red survival curves. Uh, so um, the current analysis should be focused on the, um, those patients with intermediate uh, groups that uh, we would like to dissect that group of patients from the high risk neuroblastoma patients. Because um, uh, for the uh, low risk neuroblastoma patients, the survival is already very good. It is very difficult to improve it clinically, and also it may with uh, a low statistical power. So therefore, um, the aim of our study, we suggest an integrative analysis of genomic and transcriptomic alterations in neuroblastoma. We would like to try to identify the molecular events that are driver of the di different phenotypes in particular for the high-risk neuroblastoma patients. We would like to see which are the driver um, in alterations uh, apart from those passenger ones which have more neutral effects. We would like to try to predict the um, clinical course of those patients more precisely in high-risk groups and furthermore, we examine the uh, implications and the um, clinical use of the potential driver genes. Uh, next, the data used and methods in this study. This picture shows the workflow of our whole integrative analysis. I will explain uh, step in step. And the first is that let's uh, take a close look of the data. Um, we have those uh, 498 neuroblastoma patients from this challenge, and among all the patients, 145 have matched ACGH data for copy number alteration analysis. All of the data have expression profiles from two platforms, RNA-seq and microarray. Uh, what's more, we have clinical metadata that includes event-free and overall survival times, as well as um, possibly multiple uh, prognostic mar uh, markers for MIG-N uh, from the FISH technique. Uh, I said uh, there may also be therapy data, but in this uh, analysis, we did not see uh, or use uh, the therapy data. Here are the clinical uh, data distribution of the patients. Uh, remember that there are 145 patients with both RNA-seq and ACGH data. There are, um, the uh, age um, is between 0 to 24 years old with a median at uh, 1.2. There are um, 89 male patients and 56 females. The high-risk patients uh, is 48 and 97 for low-risk. 
according to the uh, results from Fish Technique, uh, as tested uh, clinically, uh, clinically, 23 patients is uh, make an amplified, and 122 are not amplified. According to the international uh, staging system, three, uh, 33 patients are from stage 1, 20 from stage 2, 20 from stage 3, and the other from stage 4 and 4S. And here from the box plots, we see that um, the median survival is five years of the patients. After learning the data, uh, let's see how we process it. For the expression data, we just take the um, expression data directly from MAGIC ACE view pipeline and then normalized. For the um, copy number alteration data, we use an R package, MPSS, and uh, CNV pack to process it. Uh, in detail, MPSS is based on a correlated random effect model for the unobserved patterns. It takes a robust, smooth segmentation approach to identify which segment is a true copy number alteration. We then implement an R package CNV pack to detect the recurrent CNV across patients. And those recurrence is defined as 10% of all the patients. Um, during our, uh, our analysis, these two figures show that the intensity data in MIC N region, we find that uh, 22 pairs of ACGH data have opposite intensity values for the same individuals. So it is suspected that the tumor and normal samples could be hybridized oppositely. Thus, um, we compare against the intensity data against the MIC N uh, from a uh, fish result, and uh, eventually we identify 30 samples whose intensity values need to be uh, reversed before we actually use it in the analysis. Uh, next, uh, let's see how those two features, expression alter gene sets and functional um, uh, gene sets, are. Uh, identified based on the expression data and the copy number alteration data. Here, this slide shows that how we identify the expression alter gene sets because uh, we don't have uh, paired normal tissue uh, as well as um, the um, tumor tissue to identify differentially expressed genes as we usually do. So we take an alternative approach to use ranks to define uh, expression alter gene sets. Um, as I show a um, tall example here, the raw data may look like this. This is the intensity values of the expressions. And um, the table below is uh, ranked data. So for uh, each gene, uh, we rank this across individuals from the extremity from both ends of the data. So the uh, gene expression, if it have a, a upregulated or have an extremely low intensity, it will be have a, a very a small rank. And, and we will uh, repeat this rank for all those genes. The uh, expression alter genes are taken, they could take the top 200 for each patient and considered as those top uh, expression al uh, alter genes uh, within the patients. In addition, we also considered 52 literature-based genes as the expression alter gene sets. Next, which is the most crucial part of our integrative analysis uh, is the network enrichment analysis. I'll explain uh, what it is due in this picture. We use it to quantify which genes, that is genomic alterated, are highly um, connected to its neighborhood genes as shown in this uh, network graph. Um, those genes that are represented um, by stars are with uh, genomic alterations, and those neighborhood genes are those identified uh, using the uh, expressions. So uh, statistically, we calculate a uh, z-score. Uh, here, d is the observed number of links between the uh, genes whose uh, function is possibly uh, has a functional role that is identif uh, identified from the CNA analysis. And mu and sigma will be the expected um, uh, uh, number, uh, exactly mean and the standard deviation for the number of links. So a z-score uh, larger than two are those um, 
potential drivers we identified from those network and net uh, enrichment analysis. The next step is that we calculate a driver gene score to summarize the number of drivers we find in these data sets. As shown in this table, um, patients are in the columns and the rows for uh, common driver genes or patient-specific driver genes. So um, the challenges not only lie in identifying drivers, but also in identifying patient-specific driver genes. In our study, the drivers are searched from two levels, across patients and also within each patient. Uh, there are uh, shared statistics between the uh, characteristic between the common driver gene and patient-specific driver genes, meaning that both drivers have uh, recurrent CNAs in at least 10% of the patients, and those drivers would have corresponding expression change in those patients with the altered status and versus those without any uh, uh, amplified or uh, loss of the, their uh, genomic uh, intensity values. And also those drivers will have a high functional impact as assessed by the network enrichment analysis. The difference between the common and the patient-specific driver genes is that they are identified based on different sets of expression altered genes, meaning that the former is based on extremely expressed genes that is recurrent in patients, where the latter are from the top 200 genes with extreme expression identified within each patient. So if those uh, features are uh, fulfilled, the indicators will be one for particular patients and zero otherwise. Then we summarize the number of drivers in each patient, that becomes, becomes our driver gene score. And to summarize, the driver gene are defined as following. They are frequently copy number altered. They with re corresponding expression change in copy number alteration as versus non-altered individuals, and this could be assessed by using a Welsh t-test. Uh, they have high uh, functional impact in a biological network as measured by the network enrichment analysis Z-score. Uh, and also, the, our uh, driver genes covers two aspects, the common ones and the patient-specific ones, and based on a common or patient-specific expression altered genes. Move on to results. The data have 48 high-risk patients. From them, we identify 4,000 copy number alterations. And on average, um, there are 84 CNAs per patient, ranged from 9 to 400. Um, from these 4,000 CNAs, we identify 200 recurrent ones in at least uh, five patients, meaning 10% uh, of all these 48 patients and it annotates to uh, 6,000 genes. After filtering by a consistency expression between copy number altered versus non-altered patients, uh, left us 274 gene lists. And finally, we keep these 32 genes as the final potential drivers because they have a unique CNA status, meaning that they are, for a particular gene, they are either uh, amplified uh, nor, uh, or uh, deleted, but not uh, both. To identify the expression alter gene sets, we uh, have 111 common extremely expressed genes recurrent in at least four patients. Uh, why we uh, uh, set the threshold as four patients? Because this gives us a reasonable size, uh, that which is usually between 100 and 200 to perform uh, adequate network enrichment analysis. In addition, we also take uh, 52 uh, literature-based genes as a uh, uh, complement to the uh, uh, expression out of the gene sets. Uh, finally, we use our uh, integrative pipeline. We identify four uh, common driver genes, ERCC6, HECTD2, KIAA1279, and EMAX2. For the individual uh, specific driver genes, uh, there are OTOP3, MIGN, SDC3, and LAPTM5. And those numbers in brackets indicate the number of patients who carry such uh, patient-specific drivers. 
we utilize a uh, knowledge base that's um, composite information from drug, gene, and disease to see if the drivers are potential drug targets. So for this common driver ERCC6, it is associated with 21 disease and 75 variants, unfortunately with uh, no uh, uh, available drugs. However, if we uh, look more deeper into it for the patient-specific drivers, um, this uh, gene CCL5 and GRM7, we see there is a potential uh, drug targets. It again highlights our importance of identifying patient-specific driver genes. This figure shows that the neuroblastoma uh, patients with high driver gene score will have uh, worse survival, and those patients with low driver gene score have better survival. The high and low driver gene score is defined as the median of the driver scores. And we also uh, have the other um, pictures for comparison. For example, if we uh, do not use the network enrichment analysis, meaning that those genes are non-functionally characterized, the, uh, we cannot, uh, we would not be able to predict the survival. Um, and also remember, our drivers consider the uh, consist two parts: the common ones and patient-specific ones. Uh, if we only use uh, uh, either one set of the genes, the survival will not be predicted as well uh, as in the functionally uh, fully characterized driver genes. Uh, we know that um, tumor stage, MIC-N, and age are known prognostic factors in neuroblastoma driver genes, so um, uh, in neuroblastoma patients. So we would like to check that our driver gene score, whether it predicts the patient's survival independently. Um, so the first four rows uh, shows the uh, Cox proportional hazard regression analysis for this uh, four predictors in a univariate regression, we see that driver gene is the most significant predictors. And for um, the, uh, uh, the next three models, we include each clinical predictors together with the driver gene score. We see that driver gene score remains the um, more significant ones compared to the clinically known predictors. Um, the next, uh, the last model is that um, we consider driver gene score uh, and the three clinical variables all uh, simultaneously. We see that driver gene score remains the most significant as compared with a model which only composites the three clinical variables, uh, with age being the only significant ones. So this unknown um, prognostic factors may work well in all neuroblastoma patients, but it does not, uh, is not a very good predictor in the high-risk subsets of neuroblastoma patients. Our driver gene score predicts uh, survival independently. Um, paper I tell identifies um, territory arrangement is uh, a mutual uh, exclusive um, biomarkers apart from the MIC-N amplification and the atrix mutation. So in our analysis, we also try to look at the TERT expression, the how it, it performs in high-risk uh, patients. We see that though um, there is high uh, discrepancy between high-risk neuroblastoma and low-risk tumor in terms of expression levels, um, if we look at it in high-risk neuroblastoma patients in particular, patient survival cannot be predicted well based on TERT expression only. To conclude, our copy number alterations in potential driver genes, including uh, KIAA1279, MIC-N, and Astrata, severely um, increase the aggressiveness of high-risk tumors. Uh, neuroblastoma patients carrying more driver genes, uh, especially those with high driver gene score, have worse survival than those with less driver gene scores. Our methodology to combine different types of molecular data uh, is that we take those recurrent copy number alter genes, those with functional impact in biological network and with corresponding expression to CNAs as our drivers. Um, last, our mechanistic classification of neuroblastoma phenotypes uh, is performed in a relatively small sample size. So in the future, we should, it should be validated in prospective studies. 
Uh, I would like to take the opportunity to um, acknowledge the following. Uh, Le Mingshi is a principal investigator um, for this project in Fudan University. I would like to thank Mingwei for searching of the 52 uh, neuroblastoma literature-based genes. Um, those co-authors, Wen Jiang, Yu Di, and Nia from Karlinska Institute. I would like to thank David and Powell who introduced me to this challenge. Uh, Matthias, who helps us to identify the uh, possibly reversed intensity values. Uh, this um, work is supported from, from the uh, funding agency of ICB Travel Fellowship and also supported for the, by the National Science Foundation of China, China Postdoctoral Science Foundation, and the Special Foundation. Uh, Wen Jiang, the co first co-author of this paper, uh, is supported by the Chinese government scholarship as well as the Swedish Science Council. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jen. Now we have time for questions, please. Uh, thank you for the talk. Could you explain a little, little bit more about how you process the gene expression data into rank features? Because the example is not so clear how you did that. Uh, so the ranking is performed uh, by each gene. For each gene, um, we rank the intensity values from both ends of the data distribution. So if the uh, uh, data has either highest expression or the lowest expression, we will have the rank of one. And, and we repeat it for uh, each genes. Since, since we have 498 patients, so um, the total number of ranks will be 498 divided by two because we rank from both ends. Wouldn't that uh, throw away information because the highly expressed and the lowly expressed would have the same values in the end? Um, yeah. Um, but uh, in uh, our uh, analysis, we think both the uh, up-regulated and most down-regulated genes uh, whose function may be disrupted. So that's why we uh, rank it from both extremities. Thank you. More questions? Thank you for your talk. So um, your, your extreme gene score, that includes MIG-N, isn't it? For the patient-specific one, yes, we identify MIC as one of the. the yeah, virus. I was just wondering whether it's uh, what do you, how do you, whether you can comment on comparing that then in the multivariate <coughs> model to MIC separately. Mm, uh, I think, uh, I think it would surprise us if MIC N is not uh, any of our drivers identified. Uh, however, it works differently when it's included in the uh, Cox expression model. MIC N uh, only contributes uh, if a particular patient carries it. So uh, it will contribute to the summation of the driver gene score. Um, but to, um, to compare it, um, to include MIC N as a single predictor, it's just we use the median uh, expression of, uh, of... Oh, no, for MIC N, we didn't use the expression. We use its uh, CNA status. So it's okay. stratified by two groups. Yeah, so, and, and if I may ask another one, I'm so... I'm not sure whether I understood your question correctly. No, that's correct. Um, so, in, in terms of reversing the, 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 the normal of the tumor, um, so you compare that to the actual annotated mic n status in order to know what's the ground truth? Yes. Okay. Mm, because um, we, we think a fish technique would be a okay. more reliable one, and uh, it's almost impossible to observe um, deleted mic n. In reality, that's why we decided to flip it. Okay, so that was that was your rationale for doing that. And how many samples did you do that in the end with? Thirty-two. Okay, that's quite substantial. Thank you. More questions? I was wondering, you have a lot of stages in your uh, deep analysis. Um, how do you make sure that you're not, you know, tweaking each stage so long until it works well in the end? So how do you avoid data miners' dilemma? Have you cross-validated your parameter selection or your your approach choice in some way? Mm, um, yes. Uh 
I mean, if um, computationally we could do that, like using cross validation to select certain parameters, and our pipeline is not new for these data sets. Mm. It has been previously applied for 60 breast cancer patients and um, published in bioinformatics. Uh, and uh, yes, for some steps, it requires some uh, experience. In, uh, for example, when we selecting the number of out expression alter genes. But like uh, what we did in the uh, classical pathway enrichment analysis, usually we know that 100 to 200 would be a more reasonable numbers. Yes. But um, uh, that's why I also uh, mentioned in the last that uh, this is a relatively small sample size study, and uh, we would love it if there are more data to validate our results. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. So just following on from that, could you use um, sort of um, multiple fold cross validation, so, or like nested cross validation, when you have such a small data set? Mm. Uh, so, sorry, I didn't fully get your your questions. You so you mm. you were saying with the cross validation, it was difficult because you had such a small data set. Could you not maybe use um, uh, multiple cross validation? or um, iterative, mm -hmm. so splitting up into different... Mm -hmm. Yes, we, uh, um, we could um, perform cross-validation to select certain parameters, it's just um, we didn't um, um, take it, the approach in this analysis because it may be too computationally intensive because there, you see that there are many steps in our integrative pipelines. And actually, this is an established pipelines that has been applied by um, lung cancer data as well as breast cancer data. So we, we use the, uh, the default parameter settings. Mm -hmm. Thank you.